strong tower, Jesus. My strength is our Jesus. You're my deliverer, yes, you are, Jesus. The goodness of Jesus. I'm Vivian Brown. Thank you for joining me. I am so very excited because this is my very first YouTube video and I'm so proud to be able to talk about just the goodness of Jesus. Um, we will have testimony and um, talk about his scripture and just different things that are going on that will pertain to um, basically how good God is. So I'm very excited about this. This is something that um, he's been on me about and um, I'm happy to fulfill exactly what it is that he wants me to do. So here I am and um, I so thank you for tuning in. And so um, we're going to go ahead and get started right now. Well, let me tell you a little about myself. I am, um, I've never gone to seminary school. I am not a pastor or anything like that. I am simply a follower of Jesus and um, I'm a lover of Jesus and I want to be able to spread his word. When you come to my channel, um, and I would like to say our channel because I'm giving you what it is that he's given me and what he's directing me to give you. I would like for you to be uplifted. I would like for you on a day that you're on a bad day, I would like for you to be able to come to my channel and know that God is there. Know that Jesus is right by your side, no matter what you're going through. So that's what I'm about. I'm just about spreading the good news of Jesus for those that um, are not aware of him, kind of heard about him. Um, I want you to be able to get or to know about him by coming to my channel. So I, I very much thank you for joining me. I would like to go ahead and open up with prayer before we get started, and then we're gonna jump right into the word. Well, dear Heavenly Father, um, we thank you so much for um, starting this new channel. I thank you so much for giving me a word to give your people, Father. I and I thank you so much for giving me a word to give those that are, are not so sure about you or, or don't know who your darling son is. Father, we thank you this morning for making this day possible. We ask that those that are, are viewing, that you give them ears to hear, eyes to see, and even a heart that is open to hear what it is that you're trying to speak to them through me. Use me as your vessel, Father, to reach your people, Father, and those that you need to bring to you father I ask that everyone that is watching this channel I ask that you would bless them abundantly father help them to make it through whatever it is that they're trying to get through this day father we love you and we thank you father and we just ask that you bless this channel your channel like never before and father and allow it to reach each and every one that you need for it to touch in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. As I said, this is about the goodness of Jesus in the title, the goodness of Jesus. So what I would like to do is start off by reading from the beginning where Jesus was actually born. How can I start talking about the goodness of Jesus if I don't, if we don't start off with scripture about when he was born? So I have my Bible right here in front of me. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 18. This is about when the angel appears to Joseph, okay? It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she found, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, 
fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Say that one more time. That which was conceived in Mary the Virgin was conceived in her by the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. One more time. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. That is powerful. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name, can you guess? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Jesus. Well, what we're going to do is um, I wanted to go back to the one particular scripture as, because you're, you're, those of you that may not quite know who he is, I want to help you to get there. Um, so I'm asking Jesus to, asking God to kind of guide me on this. And I want to go back to uh, verse 21 when it says, he shall save his people from their sins. This is why he was born. It says that he shall save his people from their sins. Guys, we couldn't do it on our own. I mean, just think about all the things that we do. Where would we be if Jesus hadn't died for us? If he was not born just to save us from our sins? So what we're going to do is I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. And I most definitely want to go to his ultimate sacrifice. That would most definitely be the goodness that would show his goodness. But before we get there, I want to go to, I'm trying to be organized here. I want to go to John. Um, I want to go to John before I get to his, get to his ultimate sacrifice because um, I want um, you to know just a little bit about some of the things or something that he said. Um that I really, really love, which is in, um, let's see, John chapter 14, and it is starting at verse 1. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way ye know. Hmm? So Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? So Jesus saith unto him, here we go, right here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One more time. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, that's powerful right there. I wanted to read that portion before we got to his ultimate sacrifice because he's telling you right here, 
Okay, first he was born. Okay, God sent him to save us from our own sins. Then throughout his life, he said, he's setting this up, letting you know he is the way. He is the only way. Okay, and he's going to prove that. How is he going to prove it? Because he's getting ready to die on the cross for us. Not just die, but oh my God, was he cru He was tortured. I mean, whoo. So let's um, go. Let's go ahead and fast forward. Now we are going to come back. Um, as I create videos, we will be going through the life of Jesus. And um, we will be talking about the different times that he healed and, oh, he's done so many different things while he was here on earth. But right now, let's go to Matthew and we're going to go to, let's see, chapter 20. And let's start reading from when he foretold of um, his great sacrifice for us. Um, like I said, it is, um, chapter 20 and I'm trying to be organized here and we're going to start from, um, verse 17. It says, and Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the 12 disciples apart in the way and saith unto them, behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the son of man shall be betrayed unto the chief priest. And unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. He didn't stop there. He says, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Now, when I read these scriptures, it just hurts me to my heart because I'm that kind of person. I'm so sensitive and I'm very passionate about um, things and I have such compassion for people. And most definitely, I hate to hear what he had to go through, but I, I know he had to do that. But it just really, it hurts. But the one thing I love is that that last scripture, scripture 19, ends with um, the third day he shall rise again. That brings me such comfort. And it should bring you comfort as well to know that death couldn't hold on to our Lord and Savior, Jesus. He did get up out that grave. So I am um, uh, so very happy about that. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I would like to bring to life those last couple of scriptures about when he foretold what was going to happen to him. So tune in to this. He's guilty of nothing more than being deluded. He has broken the law. Your law, not Caesar's. Get him out and teach him some respect. Forty lashes. Oh, oh, ah! 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 So you're a king. <laughs> Every king needs a crown. I give you a choice. Barabbas, a common murderer. Or this preacher. Who claims to be your king. You must decide. And the prophet? How can you condemn this man and spare a murderer? Very well. Crucify him. You! Help him carry the cross! Get away! 
What will the sign on his cross say, Prefect? Put in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. of Jesus. That cannot be denied. Um, that was an ultimate sacrifice that he gave. The goodness of Jesus to give us himself <laughs> to save us from ourselves. How about that? To give himself, to sacrifice himself, to save us from ourselves. Now that is something. And we, and I thank G, I thank God for seeing fit to send his only begotten son so to where whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life we thank you father and we love you until next time take care <laughs>